Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Tuesday lesson here on our YouTube channel with B'nai Baruch. Now, if you're new to the YouTube channel or if you're interested in the wisdom of Kabbalah but you don't know where to start, please visit kabbalah.info and you can join the CabU Academy there and meet like minded people and, of course, join any group that you like. On top of that, having said that, if you're new to the wisdom of Kabbalah and you don't want to get in your hands too deep or get your feet in too deep more like and you'd like to stick around and see what it's all about you can find our first second and third semester lessons for the introduction to the wisdom of Kabbalah on our YouTube channel on the playlists all right so these lessons are going to be a bit more excerpts from the morning lesson for the guys who are already studying with us with B'nai Baruch. Now then so where do we leave off where do we stop at I Item number three, we're on the topic faith above reason. And we're going to start with item number three. And we've got Rabash article number 28. All right, so let's do it one step at a time. If you have any questions, as usual, shoot them through. We'll try to take care of them best we can. And we'll find some answers from the excerpts ourselves. You must believe above reason and imagine that he has already been rewarded with faith in the creator, that is, felt in his organs, and he sees and feels that the creator leads the entire world as the good who does good. Although when he looks within reason, he sees the opposite, he should still work above reason, and it should appear to him as though he can already feel in his organs that so it really is, that the creator leads the world as the good who does good. Here he acquires the importance of the goal, and from here he derives life, meaning joy at being near to the Creator. Then a person can say that the Creator is good and does good, and feel that he has the strength to tell the Creator, you have chosen us from among all nations, you have loved us and wanted us since he has a reason to thank the Creator, and to the extent that he feels the importance of spirituality, so he establishes the praise of the Creator. All right, as usual, we're going to read that twice. And now on the second time, we can do a bit of commenting on it. He must believe above reason and imagine that he has already been rewarded with faith in the Creator that is felt in his organs, right? In our organs, apparently, or obviously, we're talking about the desire to receive. So in all our desires, we have to be above reason, meaning above our will to receive. And imagine that he has already been rewarded with faith in the creator. So even if a person hasn't yet been awarded, he must he must think to himself like a vision. He must take this upon himself as a vision that this is where he wants to get to, because all your actions, right? If we're trying, to, if we're talking about the wisdom of Kabbalah and attainment of spirituality, what we'd like to do is direct all our actions towards the goal. So ahead of me, I have to have a vision, and that vision for us is the attribute of bestowal, love of others, so that we can actually relate to reality like the Creator is relating to it. So even if I'm not at that degree yet, I have to envision for myself. I have to aspire to be there. And I can only do that as much as I can imagine. So even if I'm not there, I should have some kind of a vision, some kind of a visualization, some kind of, you know, something that should like be plus or minus, you know, inside my, inside my description of what being above reason is. And to think about what it would be like if I was in that state already. Okay, why? Because then I'm playing the game. If I want to be something, I've got to play the game. And he sees and he feels that the creator leads the entire world as the good who does good. Although when he looks within reason, he sees the opposite. He should still work above reason. So, Despite what I see, despite the current situation that I'm in, in my will to receive, I should endeavor to try and see something that is different, which is what the Kabbalists are describing. The creator is ruling the whole of reality, and that whole of reality is directed towards a certain goal. 
And all the actions and the acts and everything that happens in reality is just purely directed towards that. And what I've got to do is, despite where I am, with a corporal reality, spirituality, doesn't matter, at the place that I'm in right now, at my current perception, I have to envision it as such that that's where I want to be, right? In my current state with, with everything that I know, feel, and understand, I have to imagine to myself what that state is like. Otherwise, I can't get close to it. So it's very important for us to understand that we need to visualize what we want to be. So my next me, me plus one, has to be kind of like extracted from the material, from the excerpts. This is why we study the writings of the Kabbalists. We're not just reading them for pleasure. We want to understand what we want to do, how we need to relate to our lives so that we can actually get to where we want to get to. By doing so, we're actually, um, we're actually pulling the future towards ourselves. So despite the fact that the world may appear to be in a chaotic situation in my corporeal eyes, I have to see it like the creator has a plan. Everything is going towards that plan. And no matter what's going on in the world, I'm always acting towards that plan as best I can from what I've learned from the texts. Here he acquires the importance of the goal. And from here, he derives life, meaning joy at being near to the creator. So here's another topic we need to take into consideration, right? So the first point here is, doesn't matter how I see the world, I have to measure everything towards the goal. And despite the fact that I don't understand why the whole world is going through suffering in order to get to love and bestow, I don't understand it, but I'm doing my best to act in that way myself okay and even if i see big problems i'm still directing myself towards the goal now here he acquires the importance of the goal why because the more i invest in what i'm doing trying to make out of myself my next degree what's going to happen is i'm going to start giving it more importance why because i'm investing in it okay so the more time dedication the more effort i give in order to be the next me it's going to create an increase in importance and if something is important for me and i'm doing something that i feel is important for me i'm going to get it says derives life meaning joy at being near to the creator all right so more and more work more and more effort directing ourselves towards the goal with the environment all the time is going to give us the extra fuel, happiness we're going to receive. Just like in the Congress we had on the weekend, right? So we were all directed towards our spiritual growth. We all got together with the friends. Everyone was just purely focused on advancing in spirituality. And because we were so focused on the goal and everybody was excited about reaching the goal, we had a lot of fun, right? We were all very happy about it. No real dramas, Everybody was just like, you know, in this flow of happiness and joy, all right? And that like lasted for what? Like two full days, right? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So half day, Friday, half day, Sunday, plus the Saturday. We had like two days, all right? And that gave a lot of strength to all of us and not to mention people from around the world. So the more effort we put into something, we begin to eat the fruits, Okay, and that's going to give us more joy and pleasure in the work as well. Then a person can say that the creator is good and does good and feel that he has the strength to tell the creator, you have chosen us from among all nations. You have loved us and want us since he has a reason to thank the creator. Why? Because the more pleasure we receive when we're working together towards the goal, it's going to, you know, it's going to make us what? Thankful, right? because we did a lot of work and then we got the fruit right and we felt pleasure and then that will bring us to being thankful to the creator and that's the sensations we should be going through now we went through this at the congress so what does that tell you that's called experience okay and wise is he who has experience so 
we should constantly be doing this all the time, not just at a Congress every now and then. So we should be constantly moving in a state where we're getting more and more of this work done together. And so within the group, we can have that pleasure and we can carry on with it. And to the extent that he feels the importance of spirituality, so he establishes the praise of the creator. Well, the more important something is, and the more I'm doing it, I'm like becoming a professional at what I do, right? So I'm becoming like a professional artist. They're very devoted to what they're doing. They're dedicated. They love what they do, right? Great artists always love what they do. So they dedicate all the time to it. So this is how we should be as well. We should be rededicating as much as we can in our spare time, using it up to advance in spirituality. And according to that, we can feel the importance of spirituality. And once it's important, we can feel joy in it as well. So once we feel joy in it as well, you're not going to go through all these ups and downs like it's a nightmare. Instead, you're going to be going through these ups and downs like, wow, this is like a problem I've got to solve in order to create what I want to create, just like an artist. Okay, so they got problems. They want to solve them so they can do what they really want to do. It's like, I don't know, it's like any any art. Any questions? There is a question, really? So early in the lesson, it's okay. <clears throat> it's okay from Africa is asking. How do we use this imagination of this future state of bestowed in the 10? <clears throat> See, that's a nice, real, solid question. Well, look. First of all, we're studying every day. And the reason we study every day is because I want to take every day from the, sorry, from Florida. Um, it's okay, from Florida. We're studying every day. And every day, what we want to do is take something so that I can apply it with the 10. All right. And what I should be taking from the lesson, every day's le morning lesson, or over, <clears throat> overall all the lessons is that what i want to become right the, the catalyst always talking about we need to annul ourselves we need to come to love bestowal stop thinking about myself think more of the others so all of these things that we're studying begin to accumulate inside of us. So every lesson i should take something which I should apply with the 10. So for example, we're here talking about, let's take a look at number three again. Okay, what does it say here? It says, we must believe above reason and imagine that he has already been rewarded with the faith in the creator, right? So faith in the creator is what I've got to like kind of envision to myself as a target. Well, faith we know is bestowal. We must believe above reason is to believe above our desire to receive. So I must act in bestowal without any self-reception. So that's what I've got to imagine. And it's even saying it in the article as well. Look, he must believe above reason and imagine that he has already been already there, even though you are not there. And the way I can really imagine it is by doing it in the tent. So if I start treating the guys with love, bestowal, thinking about them, if I nullify myself to them all the time, then exactly it's how I get to a state of what I'm imagining because I'm doing the actions. Does that make sense? Okay, if it doesn't, let me know. And is this where the work is of cancelling and nulling thoughts of ourselves? Absolutely. Because if I want to go above reason, meaning bestowal it means i've got to stop thinking about myself all right so how can i stop thinking about myself by annulling my desire that's the first thing i'm going to do annul my own desire and think of fulfilling the desire of the friends okay and then i'm bestowing and then it's actually being above reason why because i'm not thinking about myself i'm thinking about the friends so now i would so i was imagining it now i'm doing it 
okay and if I keep doing it I'll be in that state constantly I hope that makes sense all right if it doesn't let me know though okay all right it's okay from Florida USA that's good so this imagining is very important because it allows us to kind of like it allows us to make the move with respect to the life with respect to the conditions i get from the creator all right so we're constantly every day we're getting conditions from the creator right work i don't know family health you know life whatever life brings to you and then on top of that i've got the spiritual group as well my 10. so what am i doing with everything that life throws at me i'm kind of like focusing myself from all the mess i'm directing myself towards the goal so i'm only taking what's necessary for existence and nullifying everything else and bestowing to the to the group because bestowing to the group is not any different than bestowing to the creator because if i'm bestowing it's the same thing right at the end of the day what's going to change my attitude is going to change what's that attitude to put myself aside and think of others it's okay does that answer your question i hope it does if it doesn't let me know let's move on to number four all right this is from ravash's article number six specifically through faith above reason meaning even if he feels darkness on this path and even though he understands that if Malchut had illuminated openly and not in concealment and the body would feel the greatness of the creator it would be easier for him to move further and be rewarded with always being in a state of work and he would have no dissents he nonetheless chooses to go above reason all right so let's do it again specifically through faith above reason meaning even if he feels darkness on this path and even though he understands that if Malkut had illuminated openly and not in concealment and the body would feel the greatness of the creator it would be easier for him to move further and be rewarded with always being in a state of work and he would have no dissents he nonetheless chooses to go above reason All right so basically doesn't matter what we're going through if I'm always complaining about what I'm going through it means I, I cannot go above faith above reason because I'm constantly worried about the state I'm in if you want to bestow you cannot worry about the state you're in because if you do you're in yourself set uh, you're in yourself um well you're in your egoism you're in, you're in your desire to receive for yourself let's say okay so whatever i'm doing whatever i do in order to advance in spirituality it needs to be constantly it needs to be constant i just have to be working on it all the time okay because if i don't it means i'm picking states so like i feel bad today so i'm not going to do the work well if you have that kind of an attitude obviously that's going to be like bargaining with the creator you can't go faith above reason if you've got conditions because altruism has no conditions egoism has conditions so if i want to advance in spirituality i need to work regardless of the states that I'm going through and that's the most important thing that's a very important thing because a lot of people normally fall off simply because you know um, life gets a little hard or things aren't going the way they like um, so they just fall off but that's not like I said it's not the right attitude simply because it's giving conditions and if I give conditions, then 
it's only going to be reception not bestow so in order for us to go above reason it doesn't matter what i feel on the path good bad it doesn't matter good and bad are like even good or bad doesn't matter it's just like the good and the bad are not different so even if i'm feeling good or bad it doesn't matter in any in any case we're just moving forward okay item number five When a person can go with his eyes shut above reason and believe in the sages and go all the way. This is called Ibur, when he has no mouth. Ibur means, as it is written, the level of Malchut, which is the most restricted katnut possible. It's called Ibur. It comes from the words Evra, anger, and Dinin, judgments. As it is written, and the Lord was impreg impregnated in for the impregnated in me for your sake. We should interpret the meaning of anger in judgments when a person must go with his eyes shut above reason. The body resists resists this work. Hence the fact that a person always has to overcome this is called anger, wrath, and trouble, since it is hard work to always overcome and annul before the upper one for the upper one to do with him what the upper one wants this is called ibur which is the most restricted cut note possible all right so this is how it is when a person can go with his eyes shut above reason so once again this is the same thing as saying listen i don't care what happens in life okay i'm just going to go and keep studying spirituality and that's the whole concept here. That that's what it means when he says eyes shut. You just, you know, grow up and stop whinging. So you've got to just keep moving forward <clears throat> and believe in the sages and go all the way. Um, this is also how it is in real life. You know, it says believe in the sages as if it's like, you know, we're going like in blind faith or whatever, but it's not like that at all. This is how it works in this life as well in this life if you want to attain something anything you have to go full on and non-stop all right so it's the same thing as being successful in this world in this world you want to be a successful i don't know whatever businessman athlete i don't know you know anything doctor astronaut whatever you want to be if you want to be successful you have to go full monty all right all the way and that's that's just how it is so in our business we've got to go according to what the kabbalists recommend and we've got to do it all the time once we do it all the time we begin to gain experience anyway then we begin to understand that we're going through the states they were talking about so going with our eyes shut means that look i don't currently understand what's going on Okay, I don't understand my life. I don't understand where it's going. So in order to get to some kind of an understanding, I have to do first, understand later. Humanity wants to understand first and then do stuff. It doesn't work that way. It can't work that way. All right? Because kids don't understand how to walk before walking. Kids don't tell us, well, I just need to think about walking for a while and contemplate on the idea of walking. And I want to understand walking. And then I'll think about it and then I'll walk if I want. Okay, they don't do that. They just get up and go and they keep falling, right? But they keep getting up and walking again. They keep getting up and doing it again and again and again. And then it settles in. They go, ah, oh, this is walking. That's how it works out with everything in life. So in spirituality as well, we just have to take the recommendations of the Kabbalists and do it. The level of Malkut, which is the most restricted cutnut possible, is called Ibu. So if I want to stay, uh, if I want to enter spirituality, I have to get into this thing called cutnut, 
the most restricted possible state. It's called an ibur. It comes from the words evra, anger, and dinim, judgments, as it is written, and the Lord was impregnated in me for your sake. We should interpret the meaning of anger and judgments when a person must go with his eyes shut above reason. The body resists this work because we obviously want to understand first. Okay, so first tell me how much I'm going to make and then I'll think about working for you. Right, That's the mentality of people outside in the world. And that kind of person, you know, it never happens anything from that kind of a person. Nothing. Zilch. Okay, they'll be just working until they die. So, but a person who wants to attain something, they envision what they want and they just go full on. Just keep doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. And then because they keep doing it and the understanding is not there yet, they're going through what's, they, what's called anger, wrath, and trouble. Because on the one hand, you know they keep wanting to do it on the other hand though because we can't really imagine the profit from spirituality we lose strength now in this world when somebody wants to attain something they can envision the profit because they have worldly examples i say if i want to be a, like i don't know like a like a great basketball player I can have like examples of all the great basketball players or if I want to be a scientist I can have like examples of scientists in front of me and you know plus or minus a little bit here and there I can kind of envision what I'm going to be or how my life is going to be okay but with spirituality well wow, it's like bad news because first of all you're not going to get anything and the second bad news is you're going to give everything. How's that? So obviously, who's going to have energy for that? Nobody's going to have energy for that. But if I understand what they mean by giving, and if I understand what the attribute of giving does to a person, this is why we study every day, right? We're studying every day to get a clear-cut understanding of what it means to bestow. And why is it so great? Because once I started, once I start playing around with that concept, what is bestowal? What is the love of others? What does it really mean? How can I really attain it? How would it feel if we were in that state? Once you start playing around with it, then it can become a different ball game. And especially if you've got friends around, like in your ten. So then in that case, um, you can make the whole process a bit more lively and fun you know by getting together by doing all kinds of things that really excite the group in the love of others or in bestow okay and by doing so you're actually what are you doing you're increasing your implementation of spirituality while decreasing all the worldly stuff you would normally chase all right, so for example, like, like with a congress or with a lesson, right? By coming to a lesson, I'm like canceling everything else. I could be watching a movie. I could be out late night shopping. I could be having fun somewhere. I could be out on the beach having a cocktail, which is actually doable. And yeah, I could be doing all kinds of stuff. But we want to advance in spirituality. So we're pretty much restricting a lot of stuff in order to advance in spirituality. And because we feel that this kind of takes the taste of life away, we feel what's called anger, wrath, and trouble. It just becomes like hard because I keep having to push my own desires to the side and constantly think about the desires of others. That's why a person feels anger, wrath, and trouble is fine we're all going to go through that and we're all going to go over that as well all right so it's something we all have to go through though so there's no really avoiding it but what you can do with the study is not to avoid it completely but to have an understanding um understanding of what's going on with you 
Uh, if you have a little bit of an understanding of what's going on with you, because if you remember what we're studying, then you can say, well, they wrote about it. So that's how it is. Any questions? Anything else? There is another one. Well, this must be my lucky night. Another question from Isaka. It seems that the dialogue that we have in the 10 our meetings, workshops, etc., are in physical actions we take in the 10. Is this annulment in the 10 something where we correct our communication? In the 10, I should be able to correct everything, really, because I'm annulling to the 10. Also, we need to really clarify what annulling to the 10 is, right? We're annulling to the preference of spirituality over corporeality so all our annulments are basically just so that we can how should i say it we can um, increase the importance of spirituality and by the by increasing the importance of spirituality i can then overcome my physical desires because big fish eat little fish okay it's the same kind of thing so whichever desire is more important in me it's going to bypass the small ones. So the more I invest in spirituality, the more I have power to overcome my worldly corporeal desires. So when it comes to communication in the 10, I also have to measure it towards the goal. Now we're talking about, let's say, how to advance in spirituality. So we can have a discussion about it. We can even have an argument about it. Okay, You can argue even in the 10, if it's for the right cause. Well, we argue with people all the time in reality, right? But mostly it's for corporeal stuff. But we can actually sit down and have an argument, obviously a civilized one. We don't want you getting into a fight or anything, right? But what we want to do is argue, talk, discuss how we can advance in spirituality better than what we're currently doing. Okay. Now, if you do it in a workshop manner, it should be rather, you know, civilized. And, but like I said, you know, in a civilized way, you can even argue about it as well. So the dialogue we have in the 10, for everything, it, it involves all our actions. And if I annul myself, I'm actually correcting a lot of stuff. Annulment is the main action in spirituality it is the main 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 action in spirituality okay let's do another one this is item number seven this is similar to a flame that is tied to the wick the foreign thought is considered the wick which wants to install a flaw in his work that is the foreign thought makes him think that from the perspective of the mind and reason, he has nothing to do in his work. And when he gets the foreign thought, he says that he does not want to make any excuses, but everything that he, but everything that the reason says is correct, except he is walking on the path of faith, which is above reason. It follows that the flame of faith is tied to the wick of the foreign thought. Thus, only now can he observe the commandment of faith properly. It follows that the questions have become to him as merits, since otherwise he would not be able to accept any merits from faith. This is called rejoicing in suffering. Although he suffers from the foreign thoughts that afflict him, and cause him to slander and gossip and speak badly about his work. He's nonetheless happy about it, for only now, at such a time, he can observe in a manner of faith above reason. This is called the joy of a commandment or mitzvah. All right, so let's do it again. Let's just read it. This is similar to a flame that is tied to the wick. The foreign thought is considered the wick which wants to install a flaw in his work. So when we're working in spirituality and we want to bestow towards the friend or we want to attain the attribute of bestowal and love of others, 
what happens is foreign thoughts come to you all the time so let's say you want to engage in doing something good for your friend other thoughts come up other desires come up things that want to take you in some other direction this happens to all of us okay and it needs to happen you can't get rid of it and you need you know it just needs to happen so when you get weird thoughts or thoughts that kind of like take you away from spirituality then what you have to do is to go over them how can you go over them with importance okay but the foreign thoughts need to be there because if you didn't have any foreign thoughts you'd have nothing to work with so this is really really important when he gets the foreign thought he says that he does not want to make any excuses but everything that the reason says is correct except his walking on the path of faith which is above reason so once again look they're very straightforward when the Kabbalists are talking I don't want to have any excuses okay so let's say I don't know I'm tired let's say I've got things to do or whatever this is I don't know how to say it. if you have an excuse like I said before if you have an excuse it means you're negotiating with the creator and that's not an argument okay if I have an excuse for something it means that you know I can't be bothered to do it then you can't move forward so it's really important for us to understand that first of all working in spirituality is very important second of all when we work we're going to get thoughts that want to take us away from the path and only then am I really starting to do something so if I don't have these foreign thoughts that want to take me away from the work I can't really um you know work with anything if everything was always good all the time we'd be like little animals at living at the plankton level like really really little animals it's sort of like vegetative level so these foreign thoughts have to come to us so that inside of us we go through a conflict this inner conflict this inner dilemma and this inner dilemma is actually everything uh, all the clarifications are done with this inner work so foreign thoughts are good look what it says it follows that the flame of faith is tied to the wick of the foreign thought thus only now can you observe the commandment of faith properly so if I don't have obstacles if I don't have foreign thoughts coming to me and disturbing me I cannot have faith I can't have faith faith needs to be built on top of the disturbances that I'm getting although he suffers from the foreign thoughts that afflict him and cause him to slander and gossip and speak badly about his work he is nonetheless happy about it for only now at such a time he can observe in a manner of faith above reason this is called the joy of mitzvah so if I don't have any problems I cannot have faith above reason does that make sense no, it needs to make sense because if it doesn't if it doesn't you should ask a question okay all right so we don't have a question on that at the moment but obstacles on the path whether they're thoughts or whether they're actually physical stuff like I don't know it could be God forbid health work whatever you know at the end of the day all of these things come to a person in order to give the person the ability to evaluate himself on the path and then ascertain what is more important and take the more important path which should be spirituality after he's made that calculation so all of that is really important for us to bring together the most important thing with faith above reason no matter what happens you just keep walking all right and that's the main thing any other questions no no questions all right so I guess that's about it how many people are we today do we know 
we are six okay that's like fair enough that's all right does that include the guys in zoom no so we've got like eight nine ten okay all right so we're, we're like a bit of a ten no problem all right let's, shall we do another one then let's do another one number eight article number 36 what is for it is your wisdom and understanding in the eyes of the nations in the work so excerpt number eight article number 36 he should tell the nations of the world within him know that everything you say is true reasonably speaking you're correct and i have nothing to reply to you however we were given however we were given the work above reason that we must believe above reason that you are incorrect and since the work on faith must be above reason i thank you very much for your correct arguments that you have brought me since it cannot be said that a person goes above reason unless he has reason and intellect then it can be said that he's going above the intellect but when there is no reason it cannot be said that he's going above reason that is however that is sorry that is above reason means that this path is more important than the path within reason however when there is no other way to tell him walk in this path it cannot be said that he chooses the path of faith above reason for this reason precisely through the power of faith above reason it is possible to defeat the views of the nations of the world within man all right so he should tell the nations of the world within man which is what which is our corporeal desires there are only two nations right inside of me one is straight to the creator and the other one are the nations of the world so i'm either gonna have a spiritual desire which i want to work on and enlarge and grow and make stronger or corporeality it's one or the other it's not going to be anything else so when the nations when my corporeal desires in me are complaining what should i be doing i should say to them everything you're telling me is true i know you don't like to work work i know you want to run away Okay, because that's my core, my corporeal desires tell me, hey, let's get out of here quick. You know. But if if I agree with what it's saying and I justify it, because a desire to receive cannot want to love others and bestow to others. So if I understand that this is a logical reaction and this is how it should happen, and that this is normal, then there's nothing really to fight against. If you understand that these are the laws of nature and my nature is not going to agree with what I'm doing, then there's nothing really to argue with. Right? So what should I be doing? I should be telling myself, we were given the work above reason, that we must believe above reason that you are incorrect. So the body is bringing me all kinds of arguments to run away and not do this. And I say, yep, you're right. According to desire to receive for ourselves, we should not be here at all. We should be going out there having fun somewhere. But, but spirituality is precisely when I'm going above my desire to receive. So thank you very much for telling me and showing me what I should be going after. But we're going to go above that. And we're not going to be chasing all kinds of corporeal things. okay and since the work on faith must be above reason i thank you very much for your correct arguments that you have brought me since it cannot be said that a person goes above reason unless he has reason and intellect so all of these thoughts about the path um all the criticism in me about the path and so forth is really necessary for me to go above reason but when there is no reason it cannot be said that he's going above reason so if everything was good there is no place to be above reason everything is going great so 
There is no faith above reason, so you'll never get to be stole. That is above reason means that this path is more important than the path within reason. So spirituality must always be more important than corporeality. However, when there is no other way to tell him, walk in this path, it cannot be said that he chooses the path of faith above reason. For this reason precisely, through the power of faith above reason, is it possible to defeat the views of the nations of the world within man. So there is no other way for us except to go above reason because our body desire to receive, call it whatever you like, is never going to agree in bestowing to others. All right? It's a critical thing. And if we didn't have this disagreement, like it says, listen, if there is no disagreement in you, then you can't go above reason. If you can't go above reason, you can't get to bestow. So it's like one after the other kind of condition. Any more questions? Okay. Okay, great. So good. It's okay. We've got David, Patricia. It's okay. He's asking. Oh, David's here. So we're seven altogether. Seven. Plus the guys on Zoom. Eight, nine, ten. Oh, like more than ten. If I have a thought, to, it's okay. He's asking. And if I have a thought to do something that I think is bestowal to the friends, and I get a thought that says that's a silly idea or something of that nature, is that considered foreign thoughts? Ah, oh, no. Nah. Because foreign thoughts can really be against like bestowal. And if we're not in bestowal, we can't really get foreign thoughts. But foreign thoughts can come if you're making concessions. If you're, for example, um, cancelling something you like to do, for the benefit of somebody else so let's say you love going to a football game right and but you've got i don't know let's say meal with the friends so you want to go to the football game but you got meal with the 10 so you're like left in a dilemma okay and then within that dilemma you have to make a choice if i didn't have the football game there would be no reason for me to go above reason. There would be no reason for me to annul myself. There would be no reason for me to make a concession. Okay? So by precisely enjoying the soccer game and possibly having the tickets to go there as well, precisely by enjoying it. And on the other hand, at that time as well, having to do something else with the group to advance in spirituality leaves me right on the spot. So now I have to make a choice. The game or the guys. Okay, And it all depends on the concessions that I'm giving. Um, the reason um, I don't want to attach it to um, faith above reason is because that's already in bestowal. But no idea is a silly idea. If you're doing something in the group, though, it's well, well, it's well worth talking with the guys about it. Worthwhile talking with the guys to see if it's a good idea or not. If you don't tell anyone about it, you'll never know if it's a good idea or not. Okay. So if you want to do something good for the friends, you know, it's not going to be a silly idea. But it's good to talk with the friends as well. So we understand that everybody benefits from that action. And it's not just me thinking that they're benefiting. Do you know what I mean? So a lot of people do good things for people and then it backfires in their faces. Why? Because according to themselves, they think they're doing good. But what's best is if we all get, get together and if we all decide on what's good for our group, what's good for our spiritual development, what should we be doing, what should we be doing next? So that's why. So I don't think it's a silly thing. I think it's worth discussing with the guys so you can see if it's uh, a good idea or not to develop in spirituality. And remember, we want to measure everything always towards spirituality. So if you're going to do something, you should say to yourself, Am I advancing my friends 
a little bit more in spirituality by doing this? If yes, something to talk about. If no, we don't know. If I don't know, well, then you still have something to talk about. But in any case, it's good to talk with the friends to clarify all these conditions. Then once you clarified it, then you can do whatever you can do it. Because simply because you clarified it, everybody's agreeing, agreeing with it. And if we all agree on it, then it's like you're bestowing to the ten. And everything that's against bestowing to the ten is going to be a foreign thought. All right, then we'll call it a night here. And all right, we'll call it a night here and we'll take it from item number. Where were we? We just read eight, right? So we're going to do nine next week. Yeah, we're going to do nine next week. Did you guys take note? Okay, great. Nine next week. All right, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you until next Tuesday. See you guys tomorrow in the morning lesson. If not, Tuesday night. Bye-bye.